Hey, this is Jack with Tiger Air. I'm over here at the LSU football equipment room. Let's get a football cyclone installed in one of those Rydell Speed Flex. We got all of our materials laid out from our unboxing earlier. We got two blower units. We got all the outlets, two couplers, three different pairs of the lengths of tubes, charging cables, charging blocks. And we got a Rydell Speed Flex here, courtesy of LSU football. Let's see how everything goes together. For this install, we're gonna end up using the short tube, 70 degree angle outlets, and we're gonna be putting it in an extra large Rydell Speed Flex. Let's take a closer look. When you're selecting your outlet, if you look at the top of the outlet here, let's see if we can get it in focus for you. You'll see it reads 70 degrees. Each of the outlets has the different degrees, 90, 70, or 50. Make sure you select the one that you wanna use. And right here, we got everything laid out that we're gonna be using for the install including our isopropyl alcohol wipe, clean the inside of the helmet, dries within three to five seconds. Make sure you get any of that sweat or uh, dirt or buildup that you have in there. Um, first thing first, we're gonna take the tubes. You're gonna take the couplers, insert those into one side of each of the tubes. So it looks like this. And then you're gonna take the outlet, insert it into the other side of the tube. Finished, pretty simple, looks just like this. I'm gonna do that two times. And there you go, your tubes are ready. Okay, when you're installing the Cyclone into the helmet, you're gonna find on the back of the Cyclone blower and on the back of the button enclosure and battery pack, you're gonna have a couple of these circular Velcro tabs. You can see them, they come already on the back. Just pull them off the back and we're gonna get four of those installed in the helmet, two on the bottom towards the jaw two in the top open cavities of the speed flex. I'll show you how to do that, but before we even do that, where we're installing and putting those Velcros, you got a nice, nice little isopropyl alcohol wipe here. Make sure we open that up, get the helmet cleaned inside, and make sure we get a good adhesion with that Velcro tab when we get it installed. All right, we got the four Velcro tabs removed from the back of the blowers and the backs of the button enclosures. Do one at a time here. Just peel off the back of the sticker and the adhesive. Expose that sticky part. And then right up in here on the speed flex, you got this area that goes right into that corner. There's a little sloping area that goes down right here. At the bottom of that slope, just drop a Velcro sticker right there. You can see it inside there. And you can do the same thing on the other side. So it's a mirror image. You have the same one over there. You're going to take that sticker, remove the back, expose the sticky part right at the bottom of that slope right there. See that slope that goes down? The bottom of it, we're going to apply the sticker right in there. And there it is. Now you can go in, give it a little squeeze, make sure that it's stuck on there really well on both sides. And we got the two stickers for the button enclosures and battery packs. That's where those are gonna get installed. All right, we're gonna get these last two tabs installed on the inside of the cavity of the, the helmet. This part's always the trickiest part for folks. So I'm gonna show you what to do here. Can't be too shy when you're, when you're manipulating the pads inside the helmet, but you also wanna be respectful and you don't wanna tear or break anything. So over here, this middle pad right here is gonna be Velcroed down. You can see a little bit of Velcro there that holds it. You just wanna loosen it from the Velcro and then loosen it from the body of the, the shell, just like that. And then this sort of lightning shaped Z pad that's over here by the, the jaw line, you wanna take it off that Velcro as well and just rotate it out to the side. And you can see you got the white Velcro strip right there for the Z pad, you got the black Velcro strip here for the side pad, and that opens up the cavity so you can really access and see the inside of the helmet right there. Now where you wanna apply the Velcro tabs are gonna be right, right there below that, that vent, right about there where my finger is. And you want to get one here and then one on the identical mirror image side on the other side of the helmet.
All right, let's get the two cyclone blower units prepared so we can get them installed. So over here on both sides, it's real simple. You're just gonna take the coupler side, you're gonna insert it. Make sure when you're doing that, you're not squeezing down hard on the, on the vent area. That's gonna be, you know, just pushing a lot of pressure right there on the blower unit. Over here on the mud guard, just something to take note of. When you guys are charging it, we always like to flip the mud guard and slide it down a little bit. That way it doesn't block the charging lights and you can see when it's fully charged. It's real easy when you get it in there. It comes with a custom magnetic charger we've told you about. If you're not familiar with it, right there you got the charger. I'll show you the whole thing. You got a USB on one end, charging block that's included that we recommend you use. You got a little tiger symbol there. Tiger symbol is facing down and it just snaps right in there like that. When it's fully charged, all three blue LEDs are gonna be solid. They won't be blinking anymore. And if you forget to unplug or whatever and you just grab and go, it's okay. It doesn't damage it, it's just a magnet. So it's easy to get it in there if you got gloves on uh, and easy to manipulate and have it moved around without you know breaking it like a micro USB or USB-C. But always make sure you put that, put that cover right there back on top of the uh, port. That way when it gets sweaty and gets dirty, you don't have to go in there and clean it out from time to time as often or probably ever if you're taking good care and making sure that's staying on there. All right, so we got one of the blower tubes on, let's get the other one installed, and then let's get it inside our helmet. There we go, that simple. All right, you got those Velcro tabs installed in the helmet, so you got a little bit more comfortable now with the padding, and you know, it's not gonna be as daunting to go in there and mess around with this, but still gets a little bit uncomfortable moving things around when you get in there, so you get this, pulling up on the padding over there, the side pad, just exposing that, that cavity area. What we recommend you do is just take the, the blower unit, just carefully kind of drop it in there. You don't need to get it on that Velcro tab in there first, but just sort of put it down in the cavity, let that side pad go, and get that, get that button enclosure installed up there tight inside that corner first. And that way it doesn't slide around and get in your way while you're trying to install the blower and get the blower aligned on the Velcro on the inside. So we're gonna get over here, Get it up there nice and tight on the side pad over here, the button enclosure. There we go. Now it's not gonna slide around. You can see it's right there. I'm gonna turn the light on on it so you can see it maybe a little better. But there it is right there, right above that slope we had talked about earlier, off and not obstructing there, the, the, the air passageway over here and opening on the side of the helmet. Now you're gonna take the side pad, get it moved up there. And if you can see on the inside, we're gonna get the blower installed, just dropping it on top of that Velcro like that. Let it sit there, get the side pad then back, get the side pad and hold the, the tube up with your finger, push the tube out of the way. Make sure you get the side pad then moved and installed above that opening right here. So that opening is not obstructed. You'll see the tube is just right here. You can see that sitting right there. You're gonna articulate the tube or move it right there through the opening where the Z pad goes. Have that down there and you can see that it's now Right there, the outlet is below the face mask opening. And you're gonna take that Z-pad, you know, move the side pad and don't be afraid to adjust it where it needs to be. Get that side Z or lightning pad configured back there on top of the soft tubing. And there you go. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side. There you have it. You got the short tube with the 70 degree outlet popping out here. You can adjust where it actually resides inside the cavity of the blower. Maybe move it a little bit closer to the front of your face or move it farther back. That gives you some, some flex on the tube length. But if you feel like it's not sticking out far enough and you want the air blown maybe farther down, go ahead and grab one of the medium length tubes or one of the long length tubes. Try a few different configurations, figure out what feels best for you. It, it's all personal preference, whether you want it up high on the forehead or closer to your nose and mouth, more on your cheekbone. You might wear a visor. You might want to take that because the tube outlets, they articulate and can rotate 360 degrees. You can take that outlet, rotate it all the way around so it blows straight on your visor, defogs your visor, makes it cooler and more comfortable in the cavity when you have a visor on. So make, make sure you try a few different configurations, feel what, you know, figure out what feels best for you and you're off and running.